want to welcome you all for our Music Weekend Spring Concert 2023 um, Redemption Story. We heard part one last night, those that were here for that. And uh, I hope you enjoy part two, Redemption Story. And uh, my name is Michael Sandvik, and I lead uh, the ensembles and music here at Great Lakes Adventist Academy. And uh, also my colleague, Ms. Christiana Green, Mrs. Christiana Green, and she directs the handbells and, and, uh, and is involved with every ensemble. And uh, we just want to be, just say welcome. And uh, let's worship together this evening and uh, get a glimpse of Jesus Christ together. So let's pray and we'll get right into it. Father in heaven, thank you so much for your love and grace. Thank you for these students that have given of their time, of their selves, to serve and make music to serve others, to draw hearts to you. And I pray thou that you would send your Holy Spirit into this place, that you would surround us with angels and that you would make this uh, a true um, holy place as we close the Sabbath together, remembering what you have and will do for us. So we ask that in Jesus' name, amen. Genesis 6, 5 through 8 states, And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. To save the earth, it would be necessary for God to perform a most strange action. He would eradicate life from off of the earth with a worldwide flood. The wickedness of man had reached such a point as to threaten the very plan of salvation. If God did not intervene soon, mankind would likely destroy themselves or descend into such deep levels of evil that the human race could not recover. At God's direction to escape the coming flood, Noah built an ark to preserve the lives of those who were willing to enter.
After the flood, the ark came to rest in the mountains of Ararat. When bidden, Noah and his family came forth. They worshipped God in praise and sacrifice. While they worshipped, God set a rainbow in the sky. It was a token of a promise, an everlasting covenant that never again would the earth be destroyed by water.
God's plan to save mankind had been preserved. The human race was yet again taught of a Savior to come. Over the next centuries, Noah's descendants drifted further and further away from God. He, willing that humanity be reconciled to himself, called Abraham, declaring that through him should all the earth be blessed. The Savior would come in his lineage. The promise of the coming Savior was passed to Abraham's son Isaac and later to Jacob. Many years later, after Jacob's fierce night of struggle, on account of his sins, his name was changed. And God said to Jacob, Let me go, for the day breaketh. And he said, I will not let thee go, except thou bless me. And he said unto him, What is thy name? And he said, Jacob. And he said, Thy name shall be called no more Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince hast thou power with God and men, and hast prevailed. Genesis 32, 26 through 28. Like Jacob, we are all called to come to God for pardon and blessing. Like Jacob, we will be forgiven if we repent of our sins. Like Jacob, we will prevail with God, for he has willed it to be so, and he will bless us.
Many years later, the children of Israel became a mighty nation, but were cast into horrific bondage in Egypt. God delivered them with a mighty hand, freeing them from slavery, defeating Pharaoh and his armies. God would have a people to represent him to the world. They were delivered to stand for him in purity in the midst of this rebellious world.
God promised his people, Israel, the land of Canaan. Strong nations given wholly to idolatry possessed the land. Through the miraculous working of God, Israel dispossessed these nations, and God established his people that they might point the world to him and tell of the Savior to come.
Long ages after settling in Canaan, following a history of repeated rebellion and reconciliation for Israel, the time had come for the advent of the Savior. Name him Jesus, the angel instructed Joseph and Mary, because he will save his people from their sins. Jesus. His name means Savior. He came to bring salvation from sin, to reveal truth, to show the character of his Father, and to invite you and me into his kingdom. He went about doing good, healing, teaching, and demonstrating true love. Psalm 100, 1, 2, and 5 states, Make a joyful shout to the Lord, all you lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endures to all generations. Will you follow Jesus? He is good. He is merciful. He is the truth. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent not his Son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. John three sixteen and 17. Jesus lived a perfect life. Not even in one word could Satan lead him into sin. And yet, in a mysterious night, in the Garden of Gethsemane, just outside of Jerusalem, Jesus accepted the sins of all mankind to be put upon himself. He knew a cruel death on the cross would follow this night of struggle, for the wages of sin is death. He knew a strange separation from his Father was about to take place. 
But with you and me on his mind, he surrendered his will to that of his Father and determined to make atonement for us all at any cost to himself. The cup of God's wrath against sin is awakened, and Jesus consents to drink it. The prophet Zechariah describes this moment, Awake, O sword, against my shepherd, and against the man that is my fellow, saith the Lord of hosts.
Oh, what a wondrous love this is that Jesus would go through such agony for you and for me. A concept that is so complex and yet so simple. Jesus gave his life to pay for our sins, dying so that we didn't have to. Why? Love. But because it seems so simple, we often miss the full impact of the meaning of Christ's love for us. Jesus loves me. Jesus loves you. We hear the words, but are we listening? As the handbells play, Jesus loves me. Contemplate Christ's love for you. After they play through the verse once, please lift your voices in song and allow the words of this hymn to sink into your hearts and minds. What is our response to Jesus and his gift of salvation? Do we accept it willingly? Or do we close our hearts to the working of the Holy Spirit? In either circumstance, pray. Prayer brings us closer to God so that we can know and understand him and so that he can change us. Pray for guidance. Pray for a softened heart. Pray in gratitude to God. There is never a wrong time to pray with a sincere heart, and he would love to hear from you.
One of the blessings of living on this side of the crucifixion is knowing that nothing can stop Jesus from offering salvation to us. We have the assurance that our sins are already paid for, and we can be free in Christ. Praise God for Jesus' death and resurrection, because we now have the option to live a sinless life and to be a part of God's family. At the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow, every tongue confess him King of glory now. Tis the Father's pleasure we should call him Lord, who from the beginning was the mighty word. Humbled for a season to receive a name from the lips of sinners unto whom he came. He is God the Savior, he is Christ the Lord, ever to be worshipped, trusted, and adored. In your hearts enthrone him. There let him subdue all that is not holy, all that is not true. Crown him as your captain in temptation's hour. Let his will enfold you in its light and power. Surely this Lord Jesus shall return again with his Father's glory, with his angel train. For all wreaths of empire meet upon his brow, and our hearts confess him. King of glory now.
Jesus died for you and me, but Jesus also rose again, for death could not hold him. God's justice demanded that Jesus live again, for he lived a perfect life. He paid the penalty for sin and rose. God is both just and the justifier of all who believe in him. Jesus returned to heaven, but not without leaving his faithful followers the promise of the Holy Spirit. Lo, I am with you always, always, even unto the end of the world. And Jesus promises to return a second time. He will come again and take his faithful home to heaven. He will resurrect the righteous dead into eternal youth and vigor. May that day come soon. May we long for it and hasten the day by telling others. Soon Jesus is coming again. Freedom is coming, freedom is coming, freedom is coming, oh yes I know. Freedom is coming, freedom is coming, freedom is coming, oh yes I know. It won't take long until he comes. The signs are fast fulfilling. Let us occupy the time responsibly sharing the good news of salvation with a world that needs to know about Jesus. Let us praise his holy name. Let us unite together for his honor and glory.
needs to know that Jesus is coming. The world needs to know that Jesus died and rose to save each person. The world needs to know that God loves us all. How will you respond? Will you love Jesus? Will you serve him? Will you share the good news with your friends, family, and the world?
Just to, okay. All right. Um, I hope you're planning to be there. Let's be there to get all together. And I told the students before, I don't know what the song they know by heart, what it is. It doesn't tell us actually in the text, but I just have a hunch that maybe that old spiritual is referring to the song of Moses and the Lamb. When the redeemed gather on the sea of glass and they sing the song of deliverance and the song of Jesus Christ, I just wonder. Um, we're going to move into position here in just a minute for our last piece, Behold He Cometh. And uh, I want to invite any GLA alumni um, that would like to join us. They're going to sing by memory, but we've got a, stacks of music here on the ends of the pews. Uh, we can pass them out and uh, see. Where's Nathan? We, Nathan will be over here, and, and any tenors and basses go over there and get it from him. And he'll tell you where the tenors and basses are. And, and India will be over here. Where's India? All right. She'll be over here, and you can uh, get it from her for sopranos and altos if you want to use the music. And uh, you probably will. And, uh, and they're going to move out here. While we do that, um, we're going to collect a little offering that will just um, help su support uh, GLA music. And um, one of the things that really uh, we helps with um, just obviously the expenses, but um, one of the things we really we do is try to um, help sponsor kids that, um, that need, need that help. And so they can have a, that music experience. And what I always tell them, it says, when you've been blessed by someone that's helped you out so that you can have an experience in touring and music and things like that, just the way you pay it back is by, by someday go and find a kid and help them have that experience of doing music for Jesus Christ and um, go help them out. So um, we're going to do that. There's going to be ushers at the coming through. And uh, if you're real modern and you like to use um, QR codes, our wonderful advancement team has actually put little Q has put QR codes and Maggie helped put it together. And um, there's also QR codes in the basket if you want to use like Cash App on your phone or something and, and make a little donation, you can do that. So we're, we're out of the Stone Age and into the modern age. And, um, and um, anyway, if the Lord moves in your heart and you would like to help out kids be able to make music and tour and stuff like that for Jesus um, love to have you help us out Fletcher uh, is going to be playing on the organ and uh, so we have a lot, a lot going on we'll have an offering we'll have the choir getting into position alumni coming getting music and then joining the choir and uh, we'll just have a grand finale we're going to bring the, some of the house lights on and uh, it'll be a wonderful thing so Thank you all so much.
Have you guys been blessed tonight? Amen. I know I have for the past four years. Um, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity to worship you through music. Thank you for the opportunity for us to all join together and to praise you. Lord, you know what is on each one of our hearts. We ask that you hear our hearts. We ask that someone in this room was touched. Thank you for the opportunity to serve you and to praise you and worship you. We love you, Jesus, and we want to see you soon. Amen. Good night.